Hey guys, this is Gary, vegan coverator. I'm out today, and you could never guess the topic of this video. The topic is basically the state of Michigan. Now what does that have to do with anything? Well, it's probably still not what you're thinking. It's not directly related to veganism, it's kind of indirectly. You know, our quest for animal rights has been stalling lately. We're just not making progress, and the vegan diet is stalling. You know, they're still putting out this propaganda, you know, diets that are anti-vegan, to try to stop this vegan momentum that was happening. And it looks like they've done that. So I think we should shift a little bit in our focus. I think we should think about human suffering a little bit in our community. And after all, humans are animals, so there's your indirect relation. It's a form of animal suffering. So it is suffering. Which brings us to Michigan. Specifically, a, a city in Michigan. You may have heard of Flint, Michigan, but I think a lot of people don't know much of the details. For instance, you, you may have heard, probably have heard about the water contamination there. But did you know that the problem still exists. It's really dire there. Some politicians have tried to make it look like things are going okay and things are improving. That's what politicians do. But there's much more to the story of Flint. You gotta go back 30 years when the city first started having problems that were not caused by their own people. It was caused by politicians. There was a big job loss there. You know, the state was the car producer of the U.S. And also, the, I guess they made a lot of steel there. And that all went out the window when our government started shipping jobs overseas. And companies started going overseas, and we started buying non-American cars. And all this stuff did a lot of damage, and it's caused human suffering. Then it was a few years ago where the government contaminated their water. It was all because the local government was trying to save money, taking shortcuts, and not thinking about people. Now here's something you probably didn't hear about just a couple years ago. Flint, Michigan was being bombed. Literally, bombs were hitting the city of Flint. They were being bombed by our own military. Now, that, now <laughs> this sounds crazy, yes? You're probably thinking, that's ah, ridiculous. I don't believe that for a second. Well, they were military exercises. And these bombs weren't hit in open fields. They were hitting abandoned buildings. Now, that's a good target in target practice. But the thing is, no one told the people of Flint that this was going to happen. They thought they were being attacked, which means they thought the U.S. was under attack. This is really abusive. This is our government at work. Yeah, sure, two years ago Obama was the president, but I doubt he was directly responsible. Shrinking it down to normal size, you probably heard of the military industrial complex, and that's been happening. It's become a business. Obama tried to get that under control. But now Trump is the president, and he's bringing in all that back, bloating out the military again. We don't need a huge military like that. Our, our military basically just does bad things, attacking Flint, and then there was Iraq. And one more thing about the water contamination. Who was the governor who okayed this money-saving plan that put Flint to its knees? Well, that governor was a Republican. Oh, the word Republican recurs again. 
The reason I'm bringing this up is because it's four weeks from right now is the biggest opportunity for us to change our government. Biggest election yet. This is the one chance we've had to vote for Congress people since Trump won the election. What this means is we can get rid of Republicans and put more Democrats in and this will allow the Democratic Party to have the numbers they need that they don't have right now to impeach Trump. This administration is so ridiculous you would think he'd be impeached by now and he would have if the numbers were there. We can get those numbers in. In four weeks, voting can make all the difference. For instance, back in 2000, when Bush won the election, it was a real close race. I remember this. For like six weeks, it was too close to call and no one knew who the next president was going to be. It came down to Florida. And I've made a video before showing how Republicans cheat the system. Also, this electoral college, which no one likes, even Trump said we should get rid of it. He said that years back, but he won because of it. This causes Republicans to win the elections when they actually shouldn't be. They're not representing the majority of people. In 2000, Gore should have won the election if elections were fair. Out for a little walk here. Okay, that, that would have changed the political spectrum from there on in. And right now, we would have a different president, and I guarantee you, a better one. And the, go the entire government wouldn't be under Republican control right now. They wouldn't be destroying the environment, getting rid of all those regulations, and so much more. Our point in this is that we can't really fix the voting system, but it's a fact that when more people vote, it's more of the Democrats. Democrats are more likely to just not vote, especially in midterms. That's another thing that causes Republicans to just win when they're not, it's not reflecting the majority. The big point of this video is you gotta vote. This particular election could make more of a difference. Our votes are one of the only ways we can influence our world. And this one, could have the biggest impact. But in order to vote, you need to be registered. You need to do that now. You can do it online. But time's running out for you to start the registration process. So vote. Thumbs up. Share this video to other people. You can just get as many people to vote as possible. Thanks for watching and for listening. Well, I'll see you probably soon in another live video critiquing vegetable police <coughs> and his upload.